Hello everybody, I'm Lisa Ann Miller with W. Cushing & Company, and it's March. It's time to wear green, and everybody's just a wee bit Irish this month, so enjoy it. I'd like to thank uh, Rug Hooking Magazine. We work in cooperation with them. This is the latest Rug Hooking Magazine uh, that you should be getting soon, or we have for sale. And this is a really great issue because it's, it has all the reader's choice, your winners from Celebrations 32 in it. Great rugs, congratulations to all the winners. Great job. So today, this is part one of a part two series. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to hook your rugs. I've been hooking since 1976. When I sit down at the frame with a new pattern, Sometimes I have a color plan in mind, but we're also worried about color pa plans, color palettes. I like to talk about sitting down and looking at picking a mood for the rug. What mood do you want for the rug? What do you want that rug to portray? Is it gonna be soft and subtle? Is it gonna be bold? Is it gonna be vintage? That's why I think all of us like to see, myself included, uh, one rug pattern hooked in 20 or 30 different styles. Uh, when I brought the show to Souter for the Frost Orientals and Christmas Eve, people just love to see the same pattern hooked with each artist's interpretation. But what really what they're interpreting is a mood. And I think sometimes if you pick a mood, your color planning goes a lot easier. So this big pile of rugs in front of me, we're gonna talk about picking a mood how you pick a mood, or what is the mood? Do you wanna pick a mood? Sometimes I think a lot of us steer away from a rug hooking pattern because we just do not like the colors that it was hooked in. They're not our colors. There's nothing wrong with what the artist did, but not our colors. So try to imagine the rug in the colors you think they should be. And then once you pick the mood or an inspiration piece, if you have an inspiration piece, uh, a painting, a piece of china, um, a picture, anything like that, or a wool that is your inspiration, then you go into your stash or you go to purchase the wools that go with it. So in part one, we're gonna look at moods in all these rugs here. Part two, I'm going to show you the latest rug I'm hooking, which is Lucetta's Tree of Life, which is a lifetime project. I have an inspiration photo, I have an inspiration piece, and how I'm creating my mood with my wools through that. So, let's get started with part one. This is uh, the Reservoir Heron. This is the Reservoir Heron. And this was a mood that I wanted to create. This was hooked many, many years ago. I wanted it to be a watercolor, not exact, not precise. I wanted it to have a nice mood. I wanted the heron to be there, but not just be the focal. Uh, I just wanted it soft all the way around. Uh, the cat nine tails are not predominant. The water is not predominant. I actually toned down the water with coffee because it was too predominant at one time. So I wanted everything to be there, but not be there. So the mood, everything I took was a similar color palette. If I needed something to stand out, I would outline it just a tad, not much, just a tad to make his beak come out, or maybe just an extra layer around the moon. So with this, that was the goal, and I was happy with it when it was done. And actually it won a watercolor award in Oxford, Mississippi, because they thought it was a painting and not a hooked rug. Everybody likes my yellow house in Maine, as I do. What do you like about it? You can feel the breeze with the laundry. The laundry is blowing in the breeze. It evokes the sense, the feeling of New England. You can see the ocean in the background. It's not predominant. You know it's at the ocean. Uh, you know it's just either early spring or late fall. Uh, the skies are the way skies are in New England. And you can tell it's the yellow house. But the laundry everybody loves. They love the motion of it. It evokes memories of when we hung laundry out, which we did when we had our yellow house in Maine. So again, more of a watercolor style 
um, more just impressionistic, but you get the feeling I've invited you in. You want to take down the jeans and put them away or the sheets. And that was the goal. And I picked all that soft palette to do it. I drew your eye where I needed to with dark colors and moved you around the rug. The sky and the water don't compete with the rug. They're just there. Okay, we're gonna do two rugs. Now this is really um, different. Two rugs, they're the same pattern, two styles, okay? So, here we go. Same rug, two styles. All right, this, this beautiful rug, uh, this is the Hall Runner, Adams Hall Runner. This is Adams Hall Runner. This was hooked by Ruth Hall. Uh, of course, we have Ruth Hall's patterns, um, and Ruth Hall was a very good friend of Joan Moshimer. So, this is done in fine shading. It looks like cruel. Uh, it goes into a classic New England home or a classic home. A very, very um, precise piece. Your leaf turnovers. Uh, this right here, you can see that going through. Your acorns, they were outlined to be predominant. Your border is soft, but it's there, it envelopes. Uh, this could go in any bedroom, dining room, reading room, drawing room across the United States and the world. It's universal. This one, it's the same exact pattern, same exact pattern, wider cut, was hooked by myself and I used a seashell that I had picked up at Maryland Shores and I used the colors in the shell to pick my colors. And it has more of a primitive feel, uh, a naive feel. It's not exact. Uh, it looks like Crocs. It would go in a country home, an antique home, in the kitchen, in the keeping room with a lot of Crocs with it, with their blue writing on it. But my inspiration for this piece was a seashell with all the blues inside. And yes, I have a big modeled background. I didn't want it precise. I wanted it to look like sand. So two rugs, same pattern, same exact pattern, two entirely different feels. And that's the beauty of it. What do you want it to equate? What's your inspiration piece? So this is uh, Adams Hall Runner. The next one that I'm going to talk about is an interesting one. This you immediately think of as pottery, immediately. And it is called Pueblo Pottery. But you immediately, with the colors, uh, with the terracottas, uh, with all of it, you immediately get that this is pottery. And because you get that, you know what kind of pottery, it doesn't matter, earthenware, and the colors that are used in this and the wools that are used in this equate that pottery feel. It, it has the blue to equate a different pottery. It has the white or the cream with some gray to set it up. And the stripes were done with two textures and it just adds to the effect of pottery. Uh, this was hooked by Joan Moshimer, but it's a great, great rug, and it's called Pueblo Pottery. Let's go to same rug, different, different color waves. <laughs> we just tumbled all the rugs, and that's okay. All right, here is our main moose. I thought this was very interesting. This is Joan's Visitor. This is called Joan's Visitor. Uh, this one was hooked by Joan, and this one here, let's get this down so you can see it. This one has a very um, soft, subtle feel to it. Uh, you can tell that this is probably early fall, early spring in New England. Uh, there's your pine trees, your moose in the texture, and your background here, your tree line, doesn't give you a hint as to the season. So it is a universal piece. Um, I consider this early spring, 
mainly because of the greens that she used in the border. Uh, this is Maine's visitor. So this is nice and soft. The trees are predominant. The moose is predominant. Now this one here is a little less uh, soft. It's a little, it has dyed wool down the bottom. Um, and it's not, the background makes it more mannish, uh, more for a boy's room, a men's room, a den, a smoking room. Uh, you know, if you have a, a new uh, son-in-law, grandson, this is a rug that, you know, you might want to hook in these colors so that he can have it for, till he, for the rest of his life. And if you notice the blues, everything's a little more defined. It's a little more, pers not precise, it's a little more defined. This gives you the feel of early morning. This just gives you a feel of the moose by the water. The last one is a mix of the two, if you notice. You get your soft background, and this is a smaller version. These two are a smaller version of it. The moose is very predominant. It is the dead grass of early fall or spring. The water, you don't know that that's water because it is that uh, green blue and it's not blue, but it could be grass or water. And then your tree line is just skirted over. Your trees are not predominant here, making the moose the predominant one. Has a nice overall feel for a cabin, for a bathroom. This gives you the cabin feel. Uh, a more masculine feel, and then this just evokes morning in Maine or early evening. Okay, same pattern, basically three different styles. The next one, I always say I bought the company for this pattern. This is my favorite pattern of all time. Okay, and this is Christmas in the Valley. Uh, this is one of Joan Moshimer's patterns, and I love this pattern. I love the color waves in this pattern uh, because it's like looking through a porthole and seeing a village in New England. Um, this around here is brick, but it's actually all the colors that are in the rug. Uh, instead of doing a hit or miss, she did it in a stone work to equate back. But it is a, a snow globe look, a porthole look into a snowy village in New England in the winter. Things that evoke that mood, the softness of the trees and the way the trees are hooked. She didn't use white for the snow. It is just a beautiful mauve and a little bit of peach moved in. And, but you get the definition, the tree line, very solid, but very there. Um, using teals, mixed in with these mahoganies just work so beautifully. And it's a universal feeling. It's like you shook the snow globe and it started to snow in the valley in this little village. And in one small circular piece, no matter what you hook or how you hook it, you can evoke many different feelings. It can be more precise, it can be more bold, you can make things brighter, you can make things even monochromatic. Uh, you could do it all in blues, all in sepias. It's a great universal pattern, but it does evoke that nostalgia, that simplicity of the village and it's snowing. The next one is one a lot of you have are hooking or have hooked uh, for this. This is a vintage postcard pattern. And a lot of times with the vintage postcard pattern, you really like to make it look vintage. And um, this is Jack and Jill. And yeah, I wanted it warm and fuzzy. I wanted it to look like Easter. Um, I wanted the basket to be there, the spring grasses. So it is vintage. It looks, you know these are denim. You know she's got her velvet dress on for Easter. The bunnies are fuzzy. And um, all in all, it could be done in pastels. It could be done in bright colors. They could be dressed very brightly for Easter, Easter egg colors a thousand different ways to do it. I kept the sky very simple and I kept this other set of grasses very simple. They're actually from the same wool so they marry down. It was a plaid. 
so that they were predominant. You wanted to see them. Uh, but you can do this in a thousand different ways, a thousand different vintage colors. Uh, but when you hook the vintage postcards, you have to pick, do you want it to be modern, even if it's a vintage postcard pattern? Do you want it to be uh, bold? Do you want it to be similar to the postcard? That is up to you. And I know a lot of you will ask about the wool. I did bind in the wool, so I split it up. This is the sky, and then that's the layer below the sky. So this is the wool that I used. The rock wall at the farm. Yes, this is the real walk rock wall at the farm. And this is an interesting piece. Um, and if you go up on the website, a lot of times why we put so many different pictures on our website of a pattern is so you can see it in different color waves. I wanted this to depict the gray wall. It could have been a brown stone wall. It could be a completely monochromatic piece. Um, the grasses, I wanted early fall with some leaves in there, the dark pine trees, the blue skies that we get in the fall. And of course, I'm telling you a little bit that it's fall because of the trees here. So I picked the season, then married the wolves to it. Uh, I wanted fall, so I had these, and I married everything down to it. Although when I hooked it, I started from the wall and came up, and this was the last thing that I hooked and there's nothing wrong with that. These were my inspiration wools and I picked everything around that. Strawberry basket. Strawberry basket. And this is the, the rug that is our ad in this rug hooking magazine. Uh, so the strawberry basket, it is, you just, you know it's early summer. You know they're getting ready to be picked. You know it may be June. It's a soft, soft palette. The yellows play up to the reds. These are not blue reds, they are orange reds. Uh, they're mimicked into the leaves. And you it's just uh, something you would have in the kitchen, you know, or in uh, a sunroom, something like that. And this can be done it's been done in many different color waves where the basket is more predominant. In here, the strawberries are predominant, but you can change the mood of this rug by making the basket very predominant. Show off that basket, make the strawberries a blue-red, change the background to almost like a sky blue, and then change your leaves to match. This is a great piece if you have inspiration wools and you want to go and match your inspiration wools to a pattern. Great one. And you can change these to brighter whites, mother, you know, a dyed wool like mother of pearl to get different um, values in it. Now this piece, we all know what this evokes. This is an Egyptian piece. Okay. This is an Egyptian piece that Joan hooked. She kept it very Egyptian very much she has all of the colors here very bold you know what this is the skin tones the hair is dark it's not a blunt piece but it is very definitive the blues are picked the pinks are picked for a reason uh, this is really very the golds give you that look you almost think you can pull this out of King Tut's tomb. Uh, and the jewels look like jewels without any embellishment. So this really creates a very stark, a very bold move, but uh, very well done. All right, let's get some whimsy in. Here's our 4th of July pattern. And while the faces are in, you can mimic. This is something that uh, it's a small piece. You don't have to put the 4th of July. But if you're the type that have big family picnics and you want to get that fun atmosphere, uh, you can change the clothing. This is very solid clothing from the time period it was hooked. You could make it to today's. You could actually make this as a family piece and use pieces of clothing in it. Change the background to a lighter so the people pop. 
um, lot that could be done with this. If you want to look at creating a small piece with a mood, uh, this would be a good one to start with and pick some things that remind you of your family, change your hair color and everything else with that. Prudence. We've talked about prudence. We even have something up on our YouTube channel with all the color waves of prudence. My prudence is a New England prudence. It is the New England colors of blue and green and different shades. I did that to match bathroom and it matches the bathroom. I picked that because I needed a rug in the bathroom. Um, I had a, a framed blueberry print in the bathroom and picked my colors from there. I created that mood. And if you wanna create a thousand different moods or test your mood, this also comes in a pillow pattern for a small test, you can create it to look like um, Italian marble, hit or miss, uh, merino glass, it can be subtle, it can be bold, it can be anything you want it to be. This pattern is universal. Um, and we have up on the W Cushing YouTube channel a slideshow with only about 20 different color waves. I'm gonna have to update it because we have about 50 different color waves of this. So another one, if you don't like to do people, anything too small, get the Prudence Pillow and play. Play with your uh, mood. Do you, what do you want it to be? What do you want it to speak to? Great pattern because you're not trying to make it look like a person or a dog. You're just testing out your mood colors. I'm going to take, uh, we're going to go down to Christmas now. You know, I love Christmas. And I'm going to take two stockings. Okay, here's the two stockings. Um, this is the Woodland Chickadee, uh, this is the Woodland Bluebird. I hooked them both, very different feels to the both of them. Look at the moods in these two pieces. This one was done, this is a very winter, this was done to um, the chickadees that come to our feeder. Uh, very definitive, almost uh, matches our Lennox winter china, and I wanted it to be that way. It's it, where it where it hangs these are the colors especially this in the room very uh very definitive very very much so and i wasn't that concerned about the branches i let them dissipate the pine cone is important the snow is important but it does have the mood of um very very definitive this when i went to hook the bluebird i wanted it to look like a needle pointer tapestry stocking I just wanted that tapestry look, a wallpaper look. Uh, the room has predominantly these colors in it where it will hang. And I didn't want it as deep and vibrant or bold as this one. I wanted the mood to be soft. I wanted the pieces to be there. I wanted you to see the birds, not as predominantly as this one, but I wanted that overall look and um, so I hooked, so my colors were chosen after I sat down, looked at this and decided this is the one, this is the color palette that I wanted. Very soft, the mood is very soft and subtle. This is very definitive, very Christmas, very winter. Two stockings, two moods. And the back of them define that too. Very soft, very holiday. Speaking of holiday, here we go. Happy Christmas. This is another vintage postcard. The most important thing to me was not the tree. The presents were very important, but the curtains. The curtains had to drape. You had to know this was in front of a window. Um, the pine tree had to have the popcorn and the cranberries. The candles had to look lit. Uh, it's not a soft palette. It could have been done in a much softer palette. It could be done in a much bolder palette. If you do shiny brights, if you, you know, if you do brighter colors on your Christmas tree, uh, you can change this and you can change it all around to fit what your holiday mood is. This is a tree sampler. And 
this is a wonderful learning piece. You're not biting off a lot. Um, we mainly only do three at a time now. Uh, we don't do the eight, three or four at a time. And each of these trees, as you're seeing, a, equates to a different mood or a different palette. Uh, a, but the mood is more important. And you pick something like the tree first, and then you pick the mood that you want to go behind it. You pick the tree, and how it's actually hooked is you hook the tree first, and you use the branches almost like a stained glass to create the layers of your mood, where this goes from dark to light. This goes from earth to sky. This is just a snowy winter morning. Um, more of a, of a mission style stained glass piece fall piece so you can pick you don't you can go into your stash you pick your mood you pick your tree you hook it and then these are not straight lines across the branches break it up to create a mood you can stick a moon in, you can stick a building in but they're not that important as to creating the mood and this is an early spring Okay, so this is another great way for you to test your mood palette, test your moods, what kind of mood you want to create. This happens to be our barn in Maine. It was hooked by Churchill McKinney. And when Churchill hooked it, she hooked it in spring. There's a lot of elements to this piece, but she didn't hook it exactly as the barn. But more importantly, the greens give away, the sky gives away what it is. And in this tiny little piece, the mood of spring, the mood of being at the farm is created. So it doesn't have to be a huge piece to start with. It can be a small piece. And that gives you the idea that it's springtime at the farm. And look at all the colors in the tree beautiful job. Ice skates for us. Again, went with nostalgia. The mood was watercolor. The mood was not exact. Um, the, you know, it's got a feminine feel to it. Uh, we've all had skates like this. I think I had skates before I had real shoes because my mother grew up on Lake Apacon and slapped ice skates on me before I could walk. So I wanted to recreate a nostalgic look. I wanted it to be feminine. And then I used Mother of Pearl on the outside to give that snow effect. So it is a watercolor. You can see the two skates. I did hook this the hooking plaid, but I kept it all very feminine. Christmas Eve, my Christmas Eve, there are a lot of Christmas Eves. My Christmas Eve is a monochroma monochromatic watercolor. No, it is not a complete monochromatic. It's Christmas Eve, you're going to midnight mass in my world. So we had to light the church and the church is the only color that's there. And this is where we are evoking a winter Christmas. Uh, you are, it is, you know it's winter, you know it's cold. You know you're on your way to the church. The houses are enveloped. It's a quiet, the mood is quiet, the mood is peaceful, and the mood is the quiet Christmas Eve. This was done, and these are done in very easily because once you pick your palette, once you pick your mood, you don't vary from your mood. You keep the in with that color wave. You don't change it very much. You just keep in that palette and you create dimension with it. So my mood was a quiet, serene Christmas Eve. It was not the way it was portrayed in the card, which was more of a deco piece. Um, but this is Christmas Eve for me. That was the mood I created. And on a side note, these trees right here, people ask all the time about the salvage edges. The salvage edges, although they have the ribs in them, when you cut them, and you can cut them on your cutter, you cut them and they create their own dimension, their own texture, as opposed to the dyed wool itself. So I use the salvage edges periodically through here to create a different level of pine tree to make this, this stand out. So these are salvage edges, just so you know. So that is Christmas Eve. 
Sakina. We've seen Sakina in other videos. Sakina, I wanted it when I saw the pattern. I thought of French wallpaper. Uh, this can be done in a thousand, thousand different moods. Mine, again, is soft. I wanted to use the pinks. This is not a monochromatic. This is a tone on tone because we have the chocolate, the chocolate color in there uh, and the gray colors in there. I wanted it soft. I didn't want everything defined and I wanted you to move through the piece. I wanted it to be there, but not there. Uh, you can create a nautical mood or uh, a more definitive mood in blues, in greens, any color, any color that you want to use to create a mood, Sakina will be that for you. Uh, this just happens to be what I wanted. This is how the mood I wanted it to be. And um, I was happy with it when it was done. It is, does look like French wallpaper and I do like the way that it looks. Okay, this is Welcome Home. Welcome home in New England in March and February. This is how the skies look about dusk. There's always a little bit of snow on the ground and a snow on the trees. There's no leaves on the trees. And I wanted it to equate to that. Not like Christmas Eve, not where this is winter uh, and you know snowing but just there's that blue at dusk this time of year and that was the mood that i wanted uh that i wanted to capture the cabin is there the trees are there the little bit of snow on the trees is there with the arctic rays but nothing is as predominant as the sky and the tree the stick trees uh, the stick trees were important and the strict stick trees needed dimension so this is Welcome Home. This is another great small pattern. It could be hooked all in reds. It could be hooked all in purples, greens, grays, even more gray than this. This is blue. Uh, you can go in any different direction that you wanted with this. Pinks, dusty roses, uh, to create a different mood. The Sheep Kaleidoscope. Sheep Kaleidoscope is a fun pattern and you know it's spring you know the sheep are out they're dancing in the fields uh, then you have the clouds and then you have the sky with the stars in this piece yes it is a kaleidoscope but in this piece you get a very warm nice warm feeling it is springtime everything's starting to bud out the stars are out and it is a happy feeling it is a fun feeling and a happy feeling in this Sheep Kaleidoscope rug. Okay, two more. Pine Tree and Holly. I wanted this to be, when I sat down to, and, and it's, an, it's a wonderful rug, love to hook it, but I wanted it to be traditional. I wanted a traditional rug. And as you know, we started this with uh, putting snow on the pines. I didn't put the snow on because there was so much white in here uh, I didn't I did the hopscotch in the two colors but this is a very very traditional rug and by being so I wanted it that way I wanted it to be traditional uh, so this one is traditional it doesn't have to be you to me if I were to hook this again I would hook all the trees in different whites and have different reds in the background. I would make it red and white. The only green would be in the holly. Uh, so I would I would change it up, or I would make every background red and a, a, every background white with a red tree, something like that, um, just to give it a little more modern look. This is very traditional, traditional Christmas. It's bound in traditional wool. So it's what I wanted it to be, and I'm very happy with it, but this can also be more modern. It does not have to be traditional. Think a little bit outside, what mood do you want? Do you want this to be uh, something that is used just on a Christmas? And by doing the red and white, you could even do it in blue and white or green and white. Have it more of a sampler or a coverlet look. Okay, 
Our last one is the one that's been my base this whole time. And this is Aunt Amelia's. It's an antique rug. And in Amelia's, um, we have the pattern and every time, and, and why I'm bringing this one out is because you can create a mood in a geometric. It does not have to be a pictorial. It does not have to be a holiday rug. Um, so this is Aunt Amelia's. This is done very scrappy. It, you know that this is gonna be used. You know it's gonna be walked on. Uh, but this Aunt, Aunt Amelia's rug can be done in any color and a geometric can create a mood much like prudence so you could do this if you wanted it to look like the ocean in shades of blue and cream if you wanted it to go i always say if you want to hook in a uh, for a, a grandchild a niece a nephew hook it in there in the colors like for a girl pink sage purples yellows blues for the boy, more of ocean colors, and then they have the rug for the rest of their life. Uh, but this lets you know this was done with household. It's very blunt, but a geometric can also create a mood. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope that you look at your rugs when you sit down at a new pattern and you decide I wanna create a mood. And then pick your mood and then pick your colors palette and then pick your wool. So until April, I hope you all are well, stay well, be well, and we'll see you in April. Bye for now.